Good morning. Shall we begin the session? Yes, right. Very right. Today topic is the quality assurance. How we can use the quality and how we can combine with the quality terms or how we can assure that there's a quality that is going on that is known as the quality assurance. So let's start with this one. First is the objective. What is the main objective of the quality assurance? Then what is the introduction about this one? That is what are the various design objectives? Then what are the various reliable systems? We can rely on these systems. What are the various reliable systems? Then error avoidance, error detection and the correction, error tolerance, what are the various error tolerance concept that is available within the data, that is used within the data. Then error detection and the correction, error tolerance. Avoidance, tolerance, causes of error, what are the various causes of error that is available under this. Now let's see what are the various objectives, what are the various quality assurance terms that is available within this one. What are the various quality terms that is used within the quality. So let's start with the system control and the quality assurance. First is the objective, then there is the introduction in this objective. After the introduction, there is a design objectives, reliable systems, what are the various reliable systems, we can rely on this, or what are the various terms by which we can rely on, what are the various systems that is used for this reliable evidence, what are the various error avoidance terms, what are the various error detection, and the correction terms. Vivek. Uh, what are the various sources of error? Why will we use maintenance of our system? Now let's start with the introduction or objective. So the main goal of the quality assurance in the system development process. What are the various system development process? Why it is used and how it is carried out? Then what are the various system design objectives? We can say that what are the various design concepts that we use or what are the various concepts that, that we are going to use within the objective or what are the various terms that is used within this, this one. And so what are the various system design objectives, what are the various design or the software design, then the, the documentation part, why systems are tested, why we use the system and why they are tested, and the activity network of the system testing, then what steps are taken to test the system, what are the various steps that is taken to test the system, then what is the audit trail. When we use audit trail, that means what are the audit trail? Why you, we use audit trail? Then what are the various impacted that is available on the audit trail? Now, first one is the introduction. No program or the system design is perfect. When we use the communication between the user and the designer, that is not always complete or clear until it is very short. Sure. And the result is the error. Why? Because there is an error in the result, so the error in the result that is used. And the number and the nature, or the number and the nature of the, uh, that the new design that depends on the multiple factors. First is the communication between the user and the designer. Then the programmer's ability. What is the programmer's ability to generate a code that reflects exactly what we are going to say? What is the various specification that is going to say? And how to generate? Or what are the various impacts that is available to generate a code? And these two factors put an increasing burden on the system analyst to ensure the success of the system develop, quality of the system depends on the design, development, testing, and the implementation. Now, let's see what are the various design objectives. So the two operational design objectives continually sought by the developers are the system reliability and the maintainability. What are the various systems? Oh. What is the system reliability? What is the maintenance? So first one is the reliable system. When we say that there is no damage, there is no danger, there is no risk, there is no cause failure, it is allowing the system is said to be the reliability. Okay. If it does not produce a dangerous or the costly failure, and it is used in a reasonable manner. That is a manner that a typical user expects it's not. And this definition also recognizes that system may not always be used in the in the way the designer expects. And these there are the changes in the ways the user can use a system and also in the business operation. How, how, how it is used and how our business operations will be carried out. However, there are the steps analysts uh, can take to ensure that a system is reliable and how it is installed, that the reliability can be maintained. 
after implementation. So after implementation also reliability will be maintained. Now, what are the various approaches to the reliability? Now there are two levels of the reliability. First is that the system is meeting the right requirements. For example, a user might be expected to have a specific security features or the control built into the user. But if the design fails to specify them and permit the lowest of the funds or merchandise for a lengthy time before someone detects the problem, the system is not secure, the system is not valid or the reliable. And the reliability at the design level is possible only if the analyst performs a thorough and effective demonstration or determination of the system analysis. That means we rely on the things, we, we, we uh, judge the reliability at the, at the design level only if or it is possible only if the analyst is performing a thorough and effective determination of the system design. And the second level of the system reliability and involves the actual working of the system that is delivered to the user. At this level, the system reliability is interwoven with the software, engineering and the development. When an error occurs, whenever the system does not produce the expected output while it is used, so the computing department in the computing industry largely is through the works of the distinction between the error and the failure. Now, what is a failure? That is the occurrence of a software error which requires seriousness. For example, if I say there is an inventory program that is developed to truncate rather than the round half ruby, then when calculating the value of the material on the hand rate, then it is an error, a specification call for round. But it may be no consequence to the user who in fail does not consider this as a failure. However, if the program regularly or regularly skips certain items, that is that becomes a failure. So when is a error, when is a failure? Failure is a broader term than the apps. No. Next is how to avoid the errors or the error avoid and there are three approaches that is used or the three approaches that is used to the reliability one is a yes one is the error avoidance then detection and tolerance. Under the uh, error avoidance developer and the programmer make every attempt to prevent the error from occurring. The main reason is that Developer and the programmers build that product that prevents or that does not contain any error. That means there is no coding error, there is no syntax error, there is no semantic error. The main focus or main emphasis is on early and careful identification of the user requirement that is possible with the achievement of the objectives. Then next is error detection and the correction. So if the error is find out, so we have to de detect that error. If the error is available in the program, then we have to, or as a programmer, developer, we have to correct. Error detection is a, is a program that is handled in a similar manner. For example, a program that calculates the productivity of a waiter or the waitress in a restaurant by dividing the revenue from the meal served into the hours work should not fail when the employee do not serve anything. And when a blinding is not, it's not on prevent customers from coming to a, a restaurant, employees will accumulate the working time but will also use with the tolerance, with the uh, skills or strategies that he stresses company in the even in the presence of the apps. The United States, NASA, for example, designed its system to be error tolerant for the use of the redundant software. That means there is a duplicate software that is available so there is no need for the duplicate or there is no need for the NASA. And two computers process the data on the location course correction and compare the result that these produced by the error or by the two computer that is processing the same data. And the fifth computer is available to break a tie that should not happen. And it's needed that the sixth computer that is also available. So one and more more computer will be added up in order to identify, in order to the, the um, judge what are the various impact rates or, or what are the various impacts that is available within the database. Another manner of the error tolerance is the degraded processing. We have to degrade the processing, how it is used and why it is used. With this strategy, the user receives a less service than the system was designed to provide. 
Yes, meeting management, my voice is audible to you. Okay. So, for example, many electric power generation in the distribution facilities that is available in the North America are the computer controlled computer. Now, next is what are the various causes of error? Why why there is an error that occurs or what are the various causes or what error causes? So the software aspect of the system design are different from the concern about the hardware reliability. <laughs> now let's see what are the various sources of error or what are the various impacts of error or why the errors are. So software expect of the system design are different from the concern about the hardware reliability and in the hardware for example any design errors are produced or reproduced in every copy of the item manufacturer. However application systems are often unique and the design errors are not widely distributed. Of course if you are working on a system that will be sold commercially there is considerable concern over the development and the marketing of the software packages that is rampant with the system occur that occurs with the system design that is not considerable over the development and the market. Now manufacturing errors are introduced during the actual processing or actual production process. They are not a property of the design or in fact they are distribution error. There is a, we can say manufacturing errors is also occur to the distribution error that will be introduced. And this problem seldom occurs, however, should not be a major concern to the analyst. And when you say about the hardware failure that happens as the equipment that is used and begins to wear out and there is no equivalent in the software that is we do not find the software unusable because it is worn out. And the medium on which it is carried out that may become worn or damaged but the software will not damage. Therefore the primary software problem is designing and developing software that will not fail and it is also impossible to prove that there are no errors in the particular system. And the causes of errors that interest the analyst are not obtaining the right requirements, not getting the requirements right, not translating the requirements in a clear and understandable manner so that the programmers implement them properly. And the transition from system design to the software design is an additional uh, opportunity for introducing the translation errors and these are the results of the programmers not overly understanding or interpreting the design specification but it is also used or that may also occur when the analyst force the programmers to make a specification that are complete that is not in use or we can say that is not smooth yes in the latent design or the design decisions when some misunderstanding is available so the result is the need for the maintenance now next part is how the maintenance is done so when the system are installed, they generally are used for a long period. But the average life of a system, uh, the, we can say the PC is 4 to 6 years, with the oldest application often is used for over 10 years. However, this period of use brings it with the need to continually remain the, or maintain the system. Because of the usage, a system retrieves or receives after it is fully implemented. Then analysts must take precautions to ensure that the need for the maintenance is controlled uh, so there is a need uh, for maintenance is that is controlled through so the design and the implementation. And the ability to perform or ability to design, ability to provide the guidance or that is provided through the proper design practices. Now, next is what are the various maintenance issues that is available. So many private university and the government studies have been connected to learn about the maintenance requirement for the information system. Now, yes. Um, 60 to 90 percent of the overall cost of the software during the life cycle is spent on the maintenance. This is after the implementation or before implementation. That depends on the requirement of the user, requirement of the programmer, requirement of the developer. And offer maintenance is, is to be done, is not done very efficiently. In documented cases, is the cost of the maintenance and measure. Yeah, this is. This is a rough idea that is 60 to 90 percent because the majority of the yes because the majority of the course that is also spent on the maintenance that is after implementation when we implement the material or when we implement the 
Yes, when you implement the system. And the software demand is also growing at a faster rate than the supply. And many programmers are also spending more and more time on the system maintenance only, rather than the development. Not seeing that. Yeah, more more time means more and more focus on the maintenance as compared to not rather we can say as compared to the implementation phase or any other phase. Yeah, we can say there are multiple phases. One is a uh, investigation, then there is an analysis part, then there is a designing part. After designing, there is a testing that is before implementation testing. This that is known as the alpha testing. Then implementation. After implementation, again there is a testing that is known as a beta testing. Now, if there is any errors, yes, correct. So there is an error that is that occurs in between that testing or if there is any fault that arises in the testing part. So there is a need of the maintenance or there is a requirement of the maintenance of the system. That maintenance may be updation, that maintenance may be adaptation. There are two things, one is updation, one is adaptation. And the greatest amount of the amount of the maintenance work is for the user enhancement, improved documentation or the recording system for the greater efficiency. Yes, 60 to 70 percent is working on this or carried out on this. Now, these are the various design factors that is more accurately it is used for the maintaining design, maintaining efficiency, that is better use of the existing tools and the techniques, managing the system, engineering process efficiently. Next is the software design. This software design or this principle should guide the software design that is the modularity, partitioning, coupling, cohesion, span of control, size and the standard usage. 